We're in the warning flag uh, jersey because, uh, well, it's a warning to the rest of this division. The Carolina Hurricanes are going to be a very good team uh, this year. We'll, we'll break it all down. This is their season preview. Uh, I'm doing it for all the teams, and we're starting off in this great division. We've got two more to do after this. We've got Dallas. No, we've got three more. We've got Dallas, Columbus, and Tampa Bay, so watch out for those videos. But let's dive in. So, yeah. Um... Not a, not a crazy off-season um, for this team, I think that's safe to say. Um, bringing in Jesper Fast and Ryan on, on defense as well. I think Fast is a great addition to this team. I think um, he, he kind of logs those, those harder minutes and those lower lines of the forward and really can help push and drive play. Um, so I like that move. I think it does make them a little bit quicker as well because he is quite a speedy player, believe it or not. I mean, his last name sort of suggests that. Uh, Ryan was an interesting one. Um, I think obviously he's going to be a taxi squad player for most of this. Um, but yeah, like in the wings, like this is an extremely strong defense. I think that that's something that, that has been their core for the last few years. And when they had a lot of hype, like they, I think they have a lot of hype this year too. Um, which is reminiscent of what happened three years ago where they had a lot of hype and then they, they fouled and it was kind of like, this is the last time we, we, we sort of go at hur the Hurricanes. But since then, the Fords have gotten a lot better. This guy has been amazing. Uh, so it, 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 it kind of is uh, much more accurate hype around this team. So where do I think they will be without too much analysis? Um, I think they'll be second in the division. With everything going on in Dallas, and I just think Dallas is a little bit more up and down. They've got they've got a fair few injuries. Obviously, this COVID outbreak now. Um, I think that they're second in the division. I think they're behind Tampa Bay, but I think they're very well built to play teams like Florida and get out as many wins as possible. The only team that they seem to struggle against in recent history is the Blue Jackets. I think they'll do better against that team this year. Um, again, the way they're built. But, yeah, let's break it all down. So they lost Williams, Edmondson, uh, a few other smaller defenders, nothing crazy. This defense is still amazing. Um, and obviously they picked up Trocek and Shea um, before the season break, but you can kind of, kind of add them in as, you know, they, they didn't look too great in the playoffs. Uh, but the whole team kind of did. The whole team, once they got against Boston, looked as if they didn't belong. And they did have a couple of injuries, like Sveshnikov went down and then they had a few other bits and niggles as a lot of teams did, but they, they seem to be really hurting uh, Carolina. And um, and yeah, they, they won the play-in round, obviously, against the Rangers, did amazingly well. That was like boys against men. That was like, oh, these two teams aren't at the same level. And I think, Ray, I love what the Rangers are doing, so if you're a Rangers fan, don't, don't at me. Um, I like where they're going, but like, we're outclassed them. But against Boston, they could not play a full game. I think that was more just the break and going into everything. If they can have a team, a game, uh, a season, sorry, where they can ramp up and then go straight into playoffs, I think this team is built to do a bit of damage. However, they may have a very good dynamic forward group. I actually think Aho. If you've got a fantasy league that's drafting very soon, if you can get him, I would pick up Aho. Like obviously not first, but like if you can get him, I would get him. I think he's going to have an amazing year. Might be looking at some sort of trophies for him. Be in that conversation. I think he's going to have an absolute breakout year. Svesnikov has proved to be a, a star. Um, Nisus, uh, I, you know, I really like where he's at in his game too. I think he's looking for a 50-point year. They are going to need more from Jordan Stahl. They are going to need more from Dezingle. Those are two players that, that kind of went down last year. Trocek. Be interested to see how he fits into this lineup, but they're very deep on the forward, which they weren't before. Brady Shea, I'd like to see get a few more points, but whether he's going to have that ability in this team or not is going to be another story. But they're goaltending. This is a team that is built in front of them to not rely on goaltenders to win them games. Um, obviously, there's a different model with their new ownership and everything on how they build teams. It's probably one of the more analytical lineups that are out there. Obviously, it helps that you have so much talent, but it is, and I think that goaltending pairing, because there was a lot they could have done this offseason. They could have gone out and got a Braden Olby. I really think they could have, they, or all on quest before that, I think they could, probably could have got him. Um, there's a fair few of those players that they could have got, like a vet, an old grizzled vet to go under, but they were like, no, we're going to stick with the tandem, and we're going to hope that this works. These two goalies are going to take them as far as possible. I think in the regular season, it's not a huge issue. If one of them's failing, the other one can take the load. In a playoff spot, they're going to go as far as one of them can take. And like in stretches of play, these goalies can be in one of the, be some of the best goalies in the league, but and also then they can be missing for a month. And that's going to be the huge thing of if they can get a stretch 
they can just be great for a season, uh, then this team may go even further. Like, this team may, may... We may be considering this team as a Stanley Cup contender if their goaltending can be up to scratch. And especially at that time of year, if they can be winning game, games consistently. Because the team lineup is great. It's only getting better. Um, I think they lo they would have learned a lot, especially a lot of their younger players. About the playoffs, about playing Boston, I think that's a key team to play. And I think, you know, they, they've made the playoffs for the last two years. It's now that time to be like, all right, let, you know, I think they've got the ability to take the next step. Unlike Toronto or those sort of teams, I think they really do have the ability to take the next step. Um, and then you look in their future, and they have such a bright future. They've got Bean, who is the AHL Defenseman of the Year last year, who can't even crack this lineup. <laughs> and he was amazing. Like, he had a great uh, AHL year. Any other team, he'd be in, in this line. He'd be in their lineup. I thought of maybe... Yeah, no, he'd probably be on every other team's blue line. And he can't even crack this lineup. So if they do end up getting rid of Pashi or, or one of the other players, there's a fair few players under contract. Hamilton's another one that's under contract um, until the end of this year. If they do get rid of one of those players, they've got a player to come up. Like, immediately. Then they've got Jarvis, a uh, really good player uh, as well that they picked up in this year's draft. I thought that was a pretty savvy, savvy pick. Um, so I'm happy that they were able to get him. Um, so a bit more forward depth for them. And Suzuki as well. Um, I think that, yeah. So you've got, like, three pretty good depth projects down the road. I mean, Bean's probably a bit more ready this year to, to break in the lineup. Although I was kind of looking at a few of the projections and things like that. I didn't see him around there. So, yeah, I think they're going to maybe bring him in later on. It's just weird because the NHL season's not starting. They are against the cap a little bit. Um, so, yeah, how that's all going to work is going to be very interesting. So, what their taxi squad and everything looks like. Oh, it's going to be fun. But, yeah, look for the big guys to just have a breakout. Like, I, like this is the year that I think that we start to say, like, oh, Aho is like a name. Like a name, like an advertising name. Like, I think he's going to be an absolute stud. Sebechnikov, I think, as well. Um, but they've just, they've just got like, such a complete lineup. Like, it's actually scary. It's actually scary all the way down. I mean, you've got Trocek, you've got Jordan Stahl. I think Trocek being in the lineup does take a little bit of the weight off Jordan Stahl, so I'm hoping he can kind of have a bit more of a breakout this year and, and just get back to getting 40, 50 points. There's a lot of miles in that body, and it's a hard way that he plays, especially in the Penguins era, like when he was there, and then he was kind of the guy in Carolina when the team wasn't good. There's a lot of miles there, but I do think he has got a lot to, more to give. But yeah, and then you've got like Morgan Geeky, like, you know, he's, he's clearly a player, but like how he's going to fit into this roster is another is another thing that's up in the air, but they've got some real good talent coming up, and I mean, Aho, I just think is one of the best players in the league right now, and I, I just, yeah, they're, they're a team that if they're on, I reckon watch them, because they're just, it, it just going to be such good games, I think, and uh, them versus Tampa Bay, them versus Columbus, them versus Florida, uh, I think it's just going to be great games to watch. Sorry, Red Wings. Sorry, Blackhawks. I just this team is going. This 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 particular team, I think, is going to run over those teams. Um, it just doesn't matter how how they play. I wouldn't mind a little bit more grit on this team if they were able to get like a bit more of a fourth line banger, um, just to put in and out of the lineup here and there. I think they're they're missing that. Um, if that is they're they're a much more physical team than a team like Toronto, where you're like begging out for something like that. They're they're, they're more physical than that, but. Uh, you know, I'd like to someone on a taxi squad to come in every now and then they can just bang some bodies and get suspended <laughs> for lack of a better term. But yeah, I think the sky's the limit with this team. Um, it's just how far can the goaltending take them? But yeah, probably going to be second. Uh, I mean, failure would be really not not winning. I mean, this team is is more about winning something in the playoffs this year than making to the playoffs. If they don't make the playoffs, it's an abstract failure. Like, you, yeah, I don't know. you probably be patient for one more year. Um, but, yeah, if they don't make the playoffs, then you start to have that sort of Toronto Maple Leaf discussion of, like, yeah, we really need you to start. We really need to start taking that next step and sort of getting to those conference finals and things like that. But, yeah, this team, I think, is really in for some prolonged success, um, which I don't think has happened a lot. I mean, I know they won a cup, but before that, I think they won a division title in the late 90s. They came in the league in 97. I think they won a, a division title in the late 90s. They won a cup uh, in the lockout return year. And then they went on a deep run, I want to say in 11 or 10, um, where Walker um, scored a goal in, um, to eliminate the Bruins, I'm pretty sure. But it just seemed to be like they would have that, and then it'll be three or four years of just nothing. And then the fans kind of... It just wasn't enough to suck the fans in, where I have a feeling like prolonged success, this is probably going to be 
the generation of players that now puts Carolina Hurricanes as like an NHL team in Carolina as like a staple. Um, where it's like, oh yeah, they're going to prolong success for like 10 years. And if they win a cup in the next bit, which I, they, I mean, they have a roster and the prospects to be able to win a cup in the next bit. No reason why they can't. Um, goaltending, again, we spoke about that, but they're going to get more experience, these goalies. And uh, yeah, anyway, I'm super curious how it all goes um, with this team. Again, this is one, well, I'll say wake me up in April, but <laughs> it's more like May. Um, when the playoffs start, but yeah, th this team, uh, I think it's a fun team to watch. They were last year. They look great against teams like the Rangers and, uh, yeah, I just think they ran out of legs and had a few injuries. They do have more depth now and yeah, I can't wait to see what they do. Oh, by the way, the other thing is, uh, for a team that has built such a roster, they have every single one of their picks, but I think they're missing one fifth round in the next three years. They have all of their picks. So they clearly put value into that. Um, in not trading away picks for no reason. And uh, yeah, it seems to be working. And again, the defensive depth will allow them to make another trade. I think it's going to be hard to trade this year. And I looked at their schedule. Their biggest break is five days uh, in March. And that's their biggest break. So that's probably the only time that they could really pull the trigger. It's just before the deadline too. Um, that's the only real time I could see them pulling a trigger on a trade just because... Uh, there's not too many games. They'll only miss a player for one game. So you could you could justify it a little bit more um, if it was a, a defenseman for an offer, you know, for some, a forward. Anyway, guys, uh, that is the whole video. If you did like this video, hit the like button. Otherwise, hit subscribe down below. It does a magic trick where it turns red into gray. It's great. You should, you should do it because it's, it's fun to watch the color gray. Yeah, you know, I really think they should make it gray to red or something, because then it's like exciting when you subscribe, instead of it's like, it's gray and it's dull. And comment down below, what do you think of this team? Where do you think this team will be? Are you as optimistic for them as I am? Do you have a slight man crush on Sebastian Aho? I mean, come on, he's so good. He's just so unbelievably good. And now, as uh, we get to this end of this video, I did want to take a brief moment to say how good is Terry Terravine. That was pretty much it. I just such a handy player that seems to not get love anywhere he goes. He's kind of the the player that's you know just under a few stars, but seems to come in bang in some goals, uh, do really well on the point side of things. So look to him to do quite well, especially if you're a fantasy owner. Um, so I wanted to leave on that note because I was I just realized I got to the end of the video and I was like, oh, I didn't mention him. Uh, but yeah, sky's the limit for this team. But how far can the netminders take them? That's uh, that's the motto. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. See you, and bye.